Uh, take us inside that room. What was the experience like? Yeah, this was the, the second announcement. First one was Wednesday in Calgary. It was like a rally. The one in Edmonton was a news conference, and it was like a lecture. He had um, a podium set up, and he had like a slide presentation behind him. And he was explaining to the public through the media uh, why it's a good idea to unite the right and why people are behind it. And he was showing slides and charts and graphs. Many on slides. Many slides. A, a time frame as well, um, which actually <laughs> it, it <laughs> got one of the, the, the <laughs> dates wrong. He, yeah, he managed. He doesn't. He doesn't believe in linear time as we know it. Oh. He decided to jump back and forward between twenty. Because what, what, and one of the slides. It was showing the progression. Like, now there was winning leadership in 2017. Only the first slide said 2018, and then 2017. So the media picked up on that right away. It was a typo, uh, but yeah, these things happen. So anyway, it has, has an entire chronology of what he wants to do. He wants to um, become leader of the PCs, and then he'll begin negotiations with the Wild Rose, and then they'll have a a vote of members of both parties to join the parties and then there'll be a leadership race for that new brand new right-wing party they'll take on and win the 2019 election and when he was done this um, lecture you can call it that uh, lecture he went over to this big bulletin board he had written the um, grassroots guarantee that said we will only form a new party after all the members um, have a clear majority and a referendum and then he signs it in front of the cameras, right? <laughs> As if this is a real legal binding <laughs> document. <laughs> uh, and uh, so he, he did this, it was all showmanship. This is him uh, starting out, he's starting the campaign early. Um, the leadership doesn't officially begin until October 1st, the vote's next March. He's getting in early, he had to rally in, in Calgary on, on uh, Wednesday, the news conference, and talked to a lot of the media on Thursday. He's getting in early to organize because the PCs have changed the rules. Under the previous leadership races, it was one person, one vote, go to the public, sell memberships, they all get to vote. This time around, it's delegate, the old delegate system. He has to get delegates at the local writing associations, constituencies, you know, it'd be 15 from each of them, will be sent to a, a convention in March of next year where they'll pick the leader, and he has to do it. So that means going through the grassroots, it means going through the party, it means a lot more work to organize. Also, he's going early, is to bigfoot the opposition in a sense, get in early, big splashy uh, announcement, and scare off the competition. It was a very odd mixed message uh, about you know where his loyalties really lie. Are they in Ottawa or are they in Alberta? But the other thing I found really intriguing about his whole messaging is that as Graham said, all the messaging has been about the process, about how you would not merge the parties because they're technically not merging them, but how you would form this new party from the ashes of the two ones that he wants to destroy. But there's been absolutely nothing about why you should want Jason Kenney to be your party leader and your premier. He hasn't presented any message about what his vision for Alberta would be, what his platform for Alberta would be. In fact, at yesterday's event, he pointedly said he doesn't have a platform and he's not going to unveil any policies because those are going to come up from the grassroots. So what we've gotten is this very kind of like he's a marketing professor uh, explaining the technique of how the two parties will be rebranded as one new one. But he hasn't given people really any reason why they would want him to be the leader. And it's interesting because he can be quite a charismatic guy. And so far, we're not seeing any of that.